1997. What a wonderful 365 days. It was the year of the Tamagotchi, Spice Up Your Life, and Steve Irwin's Crocodile Hunter. It was also a fantastic time for fans of video games, with developers churning out the likes of GoldenEye 007 and Final Fantasy VII. It was also the year that the Nintendo 64 made it to European and Australasian shores, bringing with it classic titles like Mario Kart 64 and Diddy Kong Racing. Sadly though, it wasn't all good news, and whilst 1997 was great for all of the aforementioned reasons, the games industry also unleashed its fair share of absolute stinkers. For this list, we are once again taking a look back at one particular year and shining a light on its worst video game offerings, at least according to game rankings. As always, a game must have received a minimum of seven professional reviews in order to qualify, so if you're looking for The Crow City of Angels, then I'm afraid you're out of luck. Let's look at some. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 worst games of 1997. Number 10. Rush Hour, PlayStation, 55.75%. For once, we're actually starting one of these lists fairly strongly, as it turns out that some of the worst games of 1997 were actually not completely horrible. Many that played Rush Hour, or Speedster if you want to get European about this, found it to be rather similar to other racing games of the time, with its main difference being that races were completed top-down rather than the third-person view most audiences were used to. Other than that, Rush Hour was just kind of fine, really. The graphics were alright, but they certainly weren't anything to write home about, especially considering how zoomed out from the action the camera was at all times. The variety of different tracks, cars, and gameplay modes meant that players weren't left feeling like they'd wasted their money on a game that lacked content, and overall, the controls were competent. In short, Rush Hour was a fairly inoffensive video game, but the problem is that nobody gets anywhere by playing it safe. It's for that reason that the gaming world has mostly forgotten it, whilst fondly remembering the likes of Dungeon Keeper and Fallout games, which are equally old, but, you know, they actually did something exciting. Number 9. Star Wars Masters of Terras Kasi, PlayStation, 53.83%. You know what's great about Star Wars? All the great ways there are to fight another person. Jedi and Sith can use the Force and duel with lightsabers, while non-Force users have a wide variety of blasters and melee weapons, like the Z6, or Z6 I suppose, Riot Control Baton, which is basically a taser you can slap people with. So considering all of the fun options out there in a galaxy far, far away, why would anyone develop a Star Wars game where the central mechanic is hand-to-hand -hand combat? Upon finding that the Emperor has sent an assassin after them because he's miffed that they blew up his Death Star, the Rebels decide to challenge said assassin to a few rounds of Terras Kasi, an unarmed form of combat. Aside from the fact that the premise doesn't make sense, after all we know how trigger-happy Han Solo is, the game itself was not well executed. Critics found the controls to be sluggish, the gameplay slow, and what force moves were included were totally overpowered. Some even noted that the game felt like a generic fighter with Star Wars branding, and also questioned how much of a chance an unarmed Joe Schmo would have against your average Jedi. My guess would be about as long as it would take to force yeet a dining table at his face. Number 8. Caesar's Palace PlayStation, 52.81%. If you're looking for the thrill of betting big in a Las Vegas casino, then we can't recommend you bother playing the PlayStation title Caesar's Palace, a game so unnoteworthy that it's almost impossible to find any information about it online. We obviously did, but we do wish we hadn't bothered. The game itself aims to simulate all of the fun of losing every cent you have playing the likes of Roulette and Blackjack, but it seems to fail to generate any excitement. It's not any fun when you do win, and it's not really a crushing blow when you don't. Most critics had few good things to say about Caesar's Palace, and for the most part they found it to be quite dull. The graphics are simple but functional, and the controls are easy to navigate, though if you're looking to play Baccarat or Craps, then it will definitely help to have a firm grasp of the games before attempting to play. Overall, the game lacks any of the atmosphere atmosphere of a real casino, and we can honestly say that we'd get much more out of going to the seaside and sticking a couple of quid in a 2p machine than we would from an afternoon with Caesar's Palace. Number 7. Frogger. PlayStation. 49.82%. I'll be honest, viewers, we were as shocked as you to find the beloved arcade classic Frogger was one of the worst games of 1997. However, it turns out that the console version was completely fluffed. 
The core objective of 1997's Frogger is much the same as the original, i.e. you use your little green amphibian to traverse levels littered with obstacles in order to collect five differently coloured frogs. The main differences between the updated versions and their predecessor were that the maps were much more complex, throwing traps and enemies at the player left, right and centre, and that failure to collect a frog within a certain amount of time meant a life lost. Both its similarity to the OG Frogger and the ways in which it differed earned the console attempt criticism, with reviewers slating it for being too much like the original, whilst bringing in elements that make the experience worse, such as the hike in difficulty and the rubbish controls. On the plus side, the soundtrack is quite pleasant, so when you're at the height of your frustration, at least you'll have some fun tunes to keep you entertained as you launch your controller through the nearest window. Number 6. Clay Fighter 63 and 1 third, Nintendo 64, 47.96%. If nothing else, we have to give the Clay Fighter series points for originality. Granted, none of the games achieved a particularly groundbreaking review score, with the exception of Clay Fighter 2, which earned itself a very nice 69% on game rankings. However, eschewing traditional animation techniques in favour of stop motion animation is, in our writer's opinion at least, nothing short of genius. Sadly, this is the point where the praise for Clay Fighter 63 and 1 third ends, because although the franchise's animation style was a pretty cool gimmick, that's basically all there was going for it. Though critics said there was some fun to be had from the parody element of the game, which pokes fun at the likes of Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter, it's fairly short-lived, and once the laughs are gone, there's not much left over to enjoy. The main problems it faced were slow action, frustrating controls that made performing combos nigh on impossible, and poor sound, all of which make for a maddening experience when playing a fighting game. Considering there were so many better alternatives on the market at the time, unless you were desperate to play a game that simply made fun of its peers, then Clay Fighter 63 and 1 third was a complete non-starter. Number 5. Crypt Killer. PlayStation. 45.86%. We've lost count of the number of Saturday afternoons we spent down at our local arcade as youngsters, spending our pocket money on the latest light gun machines and feeling like the coolest kids on the block as we blasted our way through various bad guys and monsties. In the 90s, there were a plethora of popular arcade shooters that made their way onto home consoles, some making the leap successfully and others going the way of Konami's Crypt Killer. Players step into the shoes of a crypt raider, and guided by Galazon, the spirit of travels, they must search for the Eye of Guidance, all the while fighting off a load of monsters with their shotgun. Sadly, there were multiple problems with the console port that left both players and critics feeling short-changed. For one, the graphics were horribly blocky and pixelated, which in turn meant that enemies lost a great deal of their scariness. And to add insult to injury, despite being touted as a light gun game, players found that using such peripherals made the gun play horribly inaccurate, making it basically unplayable. One reviewer even went as far as to say that much fun could be derived from the Virtua Gun if you were to spend an entire evening pistol whipping yourself with it. Ouch. Number 4. War Gods. Nintendo 64. 45.32%. Considering that the studio is famed for its fantastic fighting series Mortal Kombat, it's surprising that Midway were able to churn out as big of a bag of ploppers as War Gods, an arcade fighter that was ported to home consoles a year after its original 1996 release. The aim of War Gods is to pick a fighter and then go head-to-head -head with all the others in order to become the planet's most powerful warrior. The game itself was heavily influenced by the Mortal Kombat series, featuring a very similar control system and even going as far as to include fatalities. Though they say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, it didn't do War Gods any favours as it just ended up being compared rather harshly to its bigger, better cousin. Not only were the cast of characters inferior, with one reviewer referring to their design as mildly embarrassing, but the graphics weren't great, especially on the N64 version, and everything else about the game was highly unoriginal. Had it been released in a parallel universe where Mortal Kombat didn't exist, then it would have probably been fine, but sadly for War Gods, Mortal Kombat does exist, and it's doing a far better the job of being a fighting game. Number 3. NARM PC 39.22% the world of video game modding is a bit of a minefield, and for every fun or useful mod, there are a thousand more that are completely ridiculous. The same goes for total conversions, because whilst some are entirely competent, like the Half-Life Total Conversion Counter-Strike, many others are completely useless. Unfortunately, NARM falls into the latter category. The game was originally a total conversion mod for the 1996 title Duke Nukem 3D, however it was picked up by Infogrames, who set developer TNT Team to work on a remake. Admittedly, the remake didn't come out until 1998, however, the mod was available to play in 1997, so we feel that it's more than fair to include 
include it on this list. Critics took umbrage with a number of things, but the main issue was just how boring and repetitive the gameplay was, with each level bringing nothing more than various shades of khaki and brown to the table. The heart of the problem was the fact that Nan didn't really know what it was trying to be. On the one hand, it wanted to simulate the real-life conditions experienced by soldiers in the Vietnam War, but on the other, it wanted to be an exciting first-person shooter, and sadly, it failed on both counts. Number 2. Beast Wars Transformers PlayStation 37.93% If you grew up in the United States or Canada in the 1990s, you probably remember a TV show called Beast Wars Transformers, an animated series from the Transformers franchise. Gonna throw the UK in there too, because I definitely watched it too. If you didn't grow up in a country that showed Beast Wars Transformers and can't remember the cartoon, then don't worry, we're going to tell you about it now. As it turns out, said series was popular enough to spawn itself a video game adaptation, and oh my, was it a stinker! We don't like to throw the term shameless cash grab around too often, but in the case of Beast Wars Transformers, it felt more than fair. Based on the first season of the show, the game allows the player to choose whether to side with the Maximals or the Predacons, before having them embark on a number of missions in which the goal is to sabotage the opposition. The game was universally panned for everything including, but not limited to, its graphics, which even at the time were considered blocky, its terrible controls, and its god-awful voice acting. About the only nice thing that anyone had to say about the game was that the PC version had multiplayer, though considering that it was so awful that no one would want to play it. We can't really see how that's a bonus. Number 1. VMX Racing PlayStation 34.83% you know, I'm not really sure what a VMX is, and at this point I'm almost too afraid to ask, lest people think I'm neither cool nor down with the kids, which I am. I'm a radical delight, and you should invite me to your dinner party. We think, based on the content of the PlayStation title, that it's something to do with racing dirt bikes, and since Google was only able to provide information on file extensions, then that's the definition we'll go with. In terms of gameplay, VMX Racing allows players to pick a rider before sending them out onto one of six tracks to test their motorcycling prowess. If you're really good and perform enough tricks, i.e. you can press the R1 or R2 button while doing a jump, then you get to play a completely pointless bonus stage, hooray! Actually playing the game, however, was a difficult task going in part to its terrible controls. If you crash into another bike, it doesn't make all that much difference, but if you dare to even stray slightly off the track onto some grass or a patch of dirt, then it results in a total wipeout. That's right. These dirt bikes cannot handle dirt. Throw into the mix middling graphics, cruddy sound, and an announcer that's more irritating than your average telemarketer, and you've got yourself a game that's thoroughly earned the title of Worst Game of 1997.